sir please start matin yes very good evening warm very good evening and warm welcome to all of the iip members on this eve of 8th march 2024 first of all happy international women's day to all the ladies who are uh, iip of, of our iip member who are joined today today is the first session of protocols in pediatrics under presidential action plan 2024 we will be conducting it on every second friday of this of the month protocol is an approach in more standardized way which everyone will be able to understand and implement protocol standardization is concept of care which is known and accepted by all so that all can speak and understand same language this will in turn convert standardization of health delivery to the patients example when we all are driving we follow traffic rules this example Martin, you are disconnected. He is disconnected, Martin. Network is weak, little bit, Martin. Martin, you can switch off your video. He is there, sir. Yeah, But... he has come back. He has joined yes, back. Yes, 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 sir. Martin, we can't hear you. Unmute, sir. Unmute. You can take over, sir. Yeah, Martin. Yes, yes. Unmute yourself. Yes, sir. Net. Okay, sir. Network bug, sir. Check, sir. Hmm. I, sir, network, sir. Ha. Now you can speak. Yes. Okay. Uh, as this just for example of protocol. Uh, we all. uh when we are driving the vehicle we follow traffic rules that is if it's red we stop at that moment if it is yellow we slow down and when it is green we go and continue so these certain protocols are laid down and we all follow them as it improves the i think outcome hmm. so it, if we use this in medical field we use standardized assessments and standardized care and obviously protocols should be revised and standardized with a short introduction and importance of this protocols in icu uh i would like now right request few words of wisdom by respected president of ma ip good evening friends first of all happy ma shivra uh, ratri and happy international women's day uh respected guest of honor evle sir welcome welcome to uh, today's expert dr sachin jangnam sir and uh, our moderator dr suhas kumbar sir uh, today we are launching the first episode of protocol in uh, pediatrics already matin has explained about it only thing is ki the concept is that we would be discussing various protocols by the different uh, organizations maybe something recommended by iap or other bodies must have recommended some different proto protocols so let us start over to matin yes sir now going further i would like to request few words of wisdom by our respected secretary general dr amol sir amol sir please thank you thank you matin uh, actually i am uh, traveling to nagpur so uh, 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 Amol, there is a not network issue. Yes, you are not audible. Yes, sir. 
मतलब अमोल का नेटवर्क गया अमोल ओके या या यस यस सर ओके सर महाराष्ट्र So this is a very innovative session. First of all, of the day, I actually have right to say every session, every session, every session, every condition in medicine has some protocols to follow. Guidelines are there to to educate ourselves, and it should benefit the patient also. So without any further delay. Uh, I once again welcome you all and come over to Martin for further session. Yes, sir. Martin. Uh, I'd like to request today's guest of honor, Dr. Vijay Ule, sir, to kindly attain in the words of knowledge. Very good. Very good evening, uh, all dear uh, Mahayap members and uh, members who have, I'm sure, many must have joined from outside Maharashtra also for such a innovative and wonderful program. my greetings on the women's day and mahashivratri first of all i would like to congratulate ram for his innovative uh, you know thinking and uh, he along with uh, the very dynamic secretary amul pawar they have started this initiative and this is one of the different scientific uh, act- activities they have i you know sort of decided and vowed to continue conduct to the year and i am sure looking at the quality and the uh, You know activities that they have planned. This will be continued beyond their tenure as well. Very ably supported and uh, you know uh, encouraged by scientific submissions from other than Bhavish Mitra. Uh, the topics and the protocols discussed in this particular initiative would go a long way in protocolizing the management of various issues in pediatrics. So beautifully explained by Matin that uh, if you follow. You know, set traffic rules. Mishaps are prevented. So similarly, if you follow the protocols, mishaps in the management, child care would be prevented. And I am sure the experts would take care of the fact that uh, the protocols are customized to our Indian setting, especially uh, settings where there are constraints of uh, uh, investigation facility. Quaternary uh, care is not available everywhere. So they would translate this uh, protocols, which are Uh, set with very high standard and customize and make it uh, you know implementable at every level of health every level of healthcare i am sure the expert uh, chosen today dr sachin would uh, uh, you know uh, left will leave no stone unturned uh, to enlighten the attending delegates and dr kumbhar would uh, uh, certainly uh, you know extract the best out of this topic and from the expert and uh, Uh, another thing that i would like to mention that ram has uh, really sort of followed an inclusive uh, kind of uh, methodology of working i am so happy to see that our talent from different parts of maharashtra is being tapped and uh, unfortunately or uh, i don't know why but at uh, various fora uh, you know pediatricians from metros and the same uh, faces Uh, are exposed and they we get to see the same faces but it is such a wonderful thought and wonderful idea and it's so wonderful to see uh, and maharashtra is full of talent and this is one platform where uh, you know uh, all our pediatrician experts from interior are going to showcase their talent their hard work and their you know intellectual uh, say sort of proper and ability to tackle and contribute to the healthcare so with this few words i congratulate uh, ram amol Bhavesh Jitendra for this uh, wonderful initiative, and I'm sure Maharashtra IAP uh, uh, would make all of us so proud that all other branches across the country would uh, follow what Maharashtra State IAP is doing. With all this, once again, congratulations and all the best to the uh, faculty today. And uh, let's begin this uh, without uh, much further ado and get on to 
discussing science. So, approach to Komato Strain. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Martin, unmute. Thank you so much for kind words. Thank you so much. Pallavi madam, unmute everyone. So, uh, thank you for the kind, encouraging words, sir. Now, going further, today's protocol topic of pediatric practices unveiling protocols of excellence in approach to comatose child. For this, I welcome today's moderator, Dr. Swas Kumbar, sir, who is a uh, respected Dr. Uh, Swas Kumbar, sir, is one of the very good friends, good, you know, close friends. Swas Kumbar, sir, is MD pediatrician, consultant pediatrician, presently working as a professor and head of Department of Pediatrics, Bharti Vidyapit, Sangli, Board of Study Member of KIMS Karad, PhD Guide for Pediatric Subjects in 2022, and Program Management Trainer for Drug Resistant Tuberculosis. He has award of Dr. Patki Memorial Award for securing first position in anatomy subject in October 1993. Yeah, got merit certificate. Know. And award achieving fifth rank in university in final year MBBS Shivaji University examination. He is a UG teacher since 23 years, PG teacher for last 16 years, PG examiner for 14 years, judges and faculty for various national and level periodic conferences. Sir has attended and inv invited as speaker as various on, on occasions of various national and international conferences. Sir has uh, 20 national publications and 3 international publications. He has 3 case reports in the field of pediatrics. His special interest is regarding evaluation, pediatric infectious diseases and also pediatric critical care. He is working in Bharati Hospital for the last 16 years. So, so with this uh, actually this short introduction, I would like to request Dr. Swas Kumbar sir to please come and uh, uh, introduce our today's speaker, Dr. Sachin Jangal. Please sir. Uh, thank you, Matin. Dear Matin, for your kind words. I am audible. I am audible. Yes, sir. You are audible, sir. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. All the respected team members of my AP team. I I am very much thankful for Dr. Ram sir, president of my AP. Then I, I welcome Dr. Vijay Ole, sir, who is the past president of IAP and also today's guest of honor. And I also welcome all the respected seniors colleagues and my friends for the today's session. I'm very much grateful today and thanks Dr. Matin and Dr. My, my IP team and Sangli District Branch for giving me this opportunity to moderate this first session of newly started a concept of protocol in pediatric practice, which is a monthly online webinar, which is going to elevate the, our uh, pediatric practice. So today I'm very much uh, happy to introduce today's speaker, Dr. Sachin Jangam sir, who is a well-known pediatric intensivist who is going to give a talk on today on an approach to a comatose child. We know that uh, coma in children is a very common condition which all the practicing parents come to, uh, means uh, they come across in day-to-day -day practice at the emergency unit level. So with this, I will introduce to Dr. Uh, Dr. Dr. Sachin Changam. Now he is at present working as a director and head of department in Synergy Multi-Speciality Hospital Miras, Maharashtra. We know that Miraz is known as a medical hub for last 100 years as a one-less hospital. He has done his MD pediatrics from Sion Hospital, Mumbai in 2014. And he is a gold medal winner where he has done a fellowship in pediatric critical care in 2017 in Mumbai. He has also gone for as a faculty for National Conference in Pediatric uh, Pediatric Criticon in 2021. And, and also as a faculty in State Conference Maha Pediatric Criticon in 2019 and 2021. He is an accredited teacher in IAP fellowship program and he has also contributed to the development of textbook in pediatric intensive care protocol and training in pediatric biosimulation in various procedure checklists. So with this short or brief introduction without wasting much more time, uh, I, I, I just request Dr. Sachin to go ahead and start with the to, uh, to today's uh, uh, talk. What are the questions uh, who are having, they can just put forward in the chat box. So can we can discuss the uh, uh, questions at the end of the session. So with this, I forward to the Dr. Sachin. Please go. Thank you, sir. 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 Th
thank you thank you very much sir uh, i am very thankful to the my ap who has given me opportunity i am very much thankful to dr ram gopal sir dr vijay evde sir i know him uh, since long time when i was working in sain hospital also uh, uh, dr amal pawar sir i my ap secretary uh, with this uh, i will start my presentation i will try next uh, 20 uh, 30 35 minutes i will try to cover most approach to coma my slides are visible sir just slide sir make a slide sir make it table kindly share the slide my slides are visible sir no no, no sir not we have to share again. Yes. do slide share again sachin okay okay sir. Now? Yes. Yeah, it's coming. Yes, yes. it's visible now. Yes, please continue, sir. Kindly make it full screen, sir. Yes, thank you. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, now we'll start with the, my uh, presentation. My outline of uh, talk will be, uh, first we'll define the coma, discuss about the pathophysiology of coma uh, with uh, some etiological classification. Then emergency room management, followed by assessment and treatment of raised ICP, followed by once the child is stabilized, then diagnostic approach with history and examination and some investigations. And then we will go for the general and specific management of the coma. So coma is, deep, uh, coma is derived from the Greek word coma, which means a deep sleep. It is state of altered consciousness uh, from which child cannot be aroused with visual, auditory, or tactile stimulation. Here, both the cognitive function and the ability to respond to stimuli are impaired in coma. So there are uh, different level of consciousness has been described. Clouding of consciousness, such as impaired cap uh, capacity to think clearly or to remember the current stimuli. Delirium is defined as disturbed consciousness with motor restlessness, disorientation, and hallucination. Obtentation is uh, reduced alertness and patient appears to be in sleep but responds to verbal and tactile stimuli. Stupor uh, is defined as markedly reduced alertness and patient only responds to the noxious stimuli. In coma, patient uh, will not respond to even noxious stimuli and he will not utter understandable word. These terminologies are overlapping and confusing so most of the time we uh, Assess the neurology and neuro, uh, neurological assessment is done by modified Glasgow coma scale or AVPU scale. So what is the pathophysiology of coma? The normal consciousness is maintained by the interaction of reticular activating system, which consists of uh, both the cerebral cortex, thalamus and brainstem. Coma occurs if there is a diffuse insult to both the cerebral hemispheres. It can be metabolic, toxic, or hypoxic or ischemic damage, or it may be a focal lesion which affect the ascending reticular activating system located in the upper pons, midbrains, and diencephalon. Uh, this area can be affected by the compression. That is uh, one thing which we need, need to remember that lesion in one cerebral hemisphere will not produce coma. If the lesion in the hemisphere, one cerebral sphere is producing coma, it will produce the uh, uh, coma by increasing the raised ICP. Uh, raised ICP can lead to generalized ischemia as well as fo uh, focal uh, pressure on the uh, ascending uh, reticular activating system. So uh, we'll, uh, I will describe three brief cases and then we'll uh, go for the etiology of the coma. This was 10 months old baby admitted with the complaints of fever since three days, omitting cough, but baby had normal sensorium. This baby, uh, sensorium. This baby was uh, uh, ad admitted as an acute febrile illness and uh, was started on the IV antibiotics, antipyretics. This child was immunized till, uh, till date and uh, including he had got pneumococcal and even uh, flu vaccine. This baby developed within ad, after admission of uh, with after 12 years, baby developed sudden onset grunting, respiratory distress, altered sensorium with high grade temperature. Uh, so shifted to higher center. And uh, 
here in the in that that center also baby sensorium kept deteriorating baby needed intubation patient uh, was treated on the line of acute encephalitis syndrome patient ct was suggest after sublation ct was done which was suggestive of severe near symmetric hypodensities in the bilateral basal ganglia thalamic thalami entire brain stem and diffuse there was diffuse cerebral edema with mass effect resulting in the effacement of third and fourth ventricle which uh, these features were suggestive of viral encephalitis this patient deteriorated further and become brain dead within 24 hours uh, in spite of all uh, the management the csf and serum both turned out to be elisa igm positive for g this we had done at nai pune the second case is a uh, two years girl uh, girl was brought with the complaints of sudden onset of altered sensory with gcs of 5 by 15 e1 v1 m3 but stable hemodynamics as there was no preceding it history for depressed sensorium this patient was referred from the phc there they already had given drastic loss when this patient was brought there was no smell but still we were still suspecting a poisoning this baby required intubation and we start, started the supportive care activated charcoal was also started after 3 4 hours this baby's 2 years uh, old uh, girl's younger sister who was just 4 days old brought to with the complaints of breathing difficulty on admission this baby was also severely hypotonic gasping breathing and had left sided focal convulsions so this was the abg when this uh, 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 baby was admitted 5 days old baby was admitted the ph was 6.90 with pco of 106 so this was a clearly a respiratory failure with uh, uh, because of uh, and this uh, uh, this was a respiratory acidosis during intubation in this baby we could smell a, a mouthball or kerosene like smell and when we took a history the grandfather uh, grandfather had brought amitraz at home and someone from the family because this both the child kids were girls uh, tried to do homicidal poisoning this both babies were discharged uh, uh, with a well normal sensorium case 3 this was the 13 years old uh, girl uh, 13 years old girl who was working in a kitchen started having complaints of abdomen followed by vomiting 3 to 4 times uh, and after that she collapsed she was taken to the hospital at the hospital he was, she was hypoxic she required intubation and started on supportive care but she had lost the con uh, consciousness pupils become fixed dilated non reactive to light she was hemodynamically stable but had lost her all brain stem reflexes so she was uh, she was considered as brain dead and referred to us her ct scan was normal serum cholinesterase level was normal she was given anti snake venom as there was no pre preceding history uh, which we can explain the coma and they were from the rural area uh, four days after she we could extubate her and she was discharged after regaining the consciousness she confirmed that 2 3 hours before the incident she had gone into the back backyard where there was lots of grass and there was something was bitten on her hand but that bite mark was not present when she was uh, brought to us so this was a clearly like a crate bite and she this girl was a uh, mistakenly taken as a comatos child actually she was a neuroparalytic snake bite so why we uh, presented these three cases the uh, coma is a uh, uh, life threatening condition and most of the time uh, uh, we feel a prognosis is bad the but the prognosis depends upon the actual etiology the first child actually was normal at admission who was in the hospital vicinity but still in spite of all uh, uh, treatment we could not save the child last two cases were actually look like they were like uh, very uh, severe in coma but both uh, these last two cases we could uh, save the ch children and their outcome was good so with this uh, we'll go for the etiology the causes of coma are uh, uh, divided in two groups those with predominant structural lesion uh, and those with uh, there is no structural lesion but there is a diffuse dysfunction of the brain so those with predominant predominant structural lesion the first category is uh, structural lesion focal uh, focal lesion 
like head injury or sol hematoma abscess there can be a vas uh, vascular malformation which uh, which can lead to bleed embo uh, embolism hypertensive encephalopathy uh, carotid arterial dissection venous thrombosis there can be intracranial infection which can lead to uh, coma like meningitis encephalitis or it can be immune mediated like adm nmda or bjkc mediated um, structural damage also can be diffuse which is which can be because of accidental or non-accidental head injury again the vascular causes can also lead to diffuse injury uh, intracranial infections then uh, hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy uh, uh, which can occur after a cardiac or respiratory arrest shock or hypotension acute necrotizing encephalitis of uh, childhood um, it can occur as a part of IEM, which uh, uh, like a mitochondrial cytopathy or hydrocephalus or shunt dysfunction. Second category is those with the predominant metabolic disturbance or uh, toxins, uh, which is usually diffuse. This can be because of fluid, fluid and electrolyte uh, disturbance, hypernitremia, like hypernitremia, hyponitremia, acidosis, alkalosis. Uh, diabetes, uh, ketoacidosis, infection, poisoning, renal or hepatic failure, or some endocrine uh, uh, dysfunctions like adrenal insufficiency, type, uh, decay, hypothyroidism, IEM, uh, we have already mentioned, and toxins, or it can be because of poisons. But there are some, uh, uh, some uh, causes which are not classified uh, like uh, idiopathic status epilepticus, which can lead to the or epileptic encephalopathy, which can lead to coma, and those associated with the congenital heart disease, especially postoperative complications and central pontine myelinosis. So, there are two skills which we uh, we use uh, to assess the degree of coma. Most commonly used uh, is uh, Gasgo modified Gasgo coma scale where we assess uh, eye, eye response, motor response, and the verbal response. When patient, when patient is intimated, in, 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 instead of verbal response, we use grimace. The another classification which we use for the uh, neurological assessment, which is can be used a little rapidly, which is a AVPU scale. Here, the A is child when a child is awake, alert, and interactive with the parents. Verbal response is child is responding only if uh, parents are uh, parents call with the name or speak loudly. And P is when child responds to painful stimuli, and U is when child is unresponsive to stimuli. So, if you compare the AVPU scale and the uh, GCS. A is equal to almost 14 GCS, V is equal to 12 GCS, 12 by 15 GCS, and P is equal to 0 0.99 of GCS. So this is a rapid, this is this is this scale you can use for the rapid assessment, and uh, we can decide the further management. Like if GCS is patient is only responding to pain, that means GCS is less, uh, less than 9 or around 9, then this patient needs an emergency. Uh, respiratory support or intubation. So whenever any child comes in the emergency room, we have to uh, check for the airway patency, clear the secretions, open the airway. And if GCS is below 8, as I said, the patient will require intubation with a rapid sequence uh, induction. Uh, if it's, uh, uh, Again, check for the breathing. Uh, if a child is saturation is a uh, baby is hypoxic, give 100% oxygen. If apneic or respiratory depression is there, use bag and mask. If circulation is hampered, if CRT is delayed, pulses are weak, patient is in shock, then initially start, get the IV access, start NS or RL volus, initially 20 ml per kg. Maintain the uh, peripheral perfusion. Start inotropic support if needed. And if the patient is anti uh, hypertensive at present, then this this may be the hypertensive encephalopathy. Then we it might have to read, uh, treat with the anti hypertensive at that point. First and foremost, if you get IV access, first you check the sugar. 
if sugar is less than 60 give 2 ml per kg of dextrose 25 if in uh, emergency room if seizures are present then treat with the anti convulsants if uh, active convulsion then lorazepam is the drug of choice uh, dose is 0.1 mg per kg followed by you can load with the phenytoin or phosphenytoin 20 ml per kg if the signs of raised icp or impending hernations are present then you might have to do the manual hyperventilation transient manual hyperventilation and uh, take measures to control the icp if there is a evidence of specific poisoning, then we can use a specific antidote for it. If there is history of trauma and uh, cervical spine injuries is suspected, then we have to immobilize the cervical spine. If child is febrile, then after uh, securing the IVXS, check the sugar and collect the first blood culture. And then only give the first stop of septraizone and vancomycin plus or minus a cyclovir or dissonate or doxycycline as indicated. So initial stabilization, what are the what are the indications for the endotracheal intubation in the uh, emergency room where we suspect raised ICP? If there is a refractory hypoxia, if child is hypoventilating, if GCS is less than 8, loss of airway if there is a loss of airway reflexes if there is signs of acute herniation which requires uh, transient control hyperventilation or if there is a ch ch child is in shock and uh, required uh, uh, resuscitation so how you intubate a child uh, with a coma in a emergency room here we have to Take care of the uh, uh, take care that there is there should not be uh, ICP spike. Intracranial pressure should not rise during the intubation. If child is in cardiac arrest, we have to start uh, use the resuscitation drug. But here we have to first see that child is whether is hemodynamically stable or unstable. If child is hemodynamically unstable, uh, we cannot use a, a drug which can hypo cause hypotension like midazolam. Here we can use a fentanyl uh, uh, as a ana for the analgesia. The dose is 2 to 4 microgram per kg, followed by lignocaine to abolish the airway re re reflexes, and then followed by uh, muscle relaxant, short acting muscle relaxant like rocurinium, 1 milligram per kg. If child is hemodynamically stable, we can use midazolam, fentanyl, or midazolam uh, ketamine combination also along with the vacronym or procronym. If there is signs of impending herniation, such as decorticate or decerebrate posturing, abnormal vital signs like tachycardia, bradycardia, hyperventilation, chain stroke breathing or irregular respiration, if there is hyper hypertension or hypotension, pupillary abnormalities are present. If the unilateral or bilateral fixed dilated pupils are present. Then these are the signs of impending herniation. In such case, uh, we have to do a manual, uh, in, uh, manual bag and mask uh, ventilation and do a transient hyperventilation. If the ETCO2 monitor is available, that will be a good idea to attach it to the uh, ET and uh, target ETCO2 uh, between 25 to 30. You can use a... Uh, Hyperosmolar therapy like manitol or, bol manitol or 3% NACL bolus dose. If there is a brain abscess, tumor or granuloma, dexamethasone steroid can be used, 0.6 mg per kg can be used. In other condition, the steroids are not useful for the uh, uh, brain edema because it only works for the cytotoxic edema. If uh, still the signs of herniation are present, you might have to go for the thiopental or phenobarbital coma. And... Uh, sometimes for the decompressive craniotomy. So, if the signs of uh, herniation are not present, but signs of raised ICP are present, then we have to uh, take care that uh, how to reduce the ICP. So, these are the general management where you have to keep the head end elevation at the 30 degree 
head in midline so that venous drainage is good. Uh, there should be minimal handling, give it adequate sedation and analgesia, prevent or treat the seizures, control fever, prevent hypoxia or hypercarbia. Because hypoxia as well as hypercarbia is uh, causes secondary neuronal, inju neuronal injury and it is uh, it increases the uh, ICP. Maintain normal blood sugar level. Treat um, correct the erectoid imbalance. We, as I said, we can use a uh, hypertonic or uh, hypertonic saline or mannitol. Um, you have to use is isotonic IU fluids. You cannot use hyper, half DNS or 0.45 DNS or uh, isolate P. Here, either you have to go for the DNS or uh, normal saline or ringer lactate. And if the patient is hypertensive, then we have to use uh, uh, anti hypertensives. In hyperosmolar therapy, we have two choice. One is uh, sorry for the interruption. Am I audible? You are audible, sir. Please continue, sir. Make it yes. full screen. Please kindly make One it a screen. Yes. Please, I will sir. make it full screen. Yes, sir. Continue, Sachin. You are audible. Okay. So in hyperosmolar okay. therapy, we have two choices. Uh, one is a mannitol and other is a 3 percent uh, uh, NACL. So the hyperosmolar therapy creates the uh, uh, gradient, osmotic gradient between the plasma and parenchymal tissue and it reduces the brain water content. Uh, so there is extensive research which, uh, research which shows that it decreases the ICP in children with the raised intracranial pressure. The mannitol, it is a time-tested drug and it is extensively used. It has uh, the dose is 0 0.25 to 1 gram per kg IV. We usually use a loading dose 1 gram per kg followed by 0 0.5 uh, gram per kg. We can use it 6 hourly. Advantage is that it has a rapid effect in, uh, in reducing the intracranial pressure even before the onset of osmotic diuresis. And we don't need a center line for the mannitol. The, what are the side effects of mannitol? Mannitol can, uh, can cause hyperosmolarity. Uh, it can cause hypovolumia. It can lead to electrolyte imbalance, nephrotoxicity, especially if the patient is already hypovolumic. There is a, some concern about the rebound edema. If there is a brain uh, blood-brain barrier is damaged, uh, it leaks through it and it can lead to the rebound edema. Another uh, uh, drawback of mannitol is that if we use it repeatedly, it may lead to the tolerance and it may not be effective after 48 hours. And we cannot use a mannitol if the osmolarity, serum osmolarity is more than 320. Hypertonic saline, it can be the advantage of hypertonic saline that it can be administered as bolus or as a continuous infusion also. Uh, dose is usually bolus dose is 5 ml per kg followed by continuous infusion of 0 0.1 to 1 ml per kg per hour and uh, in, in, for this 3% uh, NESL we need to monitor the serum sodium every 6 hourly and we, we should not exceed the serum sodium level more than 160. Advantage of hypertonic saline is that it can uh, be used repeatedly it does not cause tolerance as mannitol. Uh, it is beneficial as res uh, rescue therapy. It can be safely used in a hemodynamically unstable child. Um, again, as uh, as mannitol, uh, mannitol cannot be used in unstable child or hypo uh, hypodensive child. It increases your intraoscular uh, volume and uh, and hence it also improves the over hemodynamics. Uh, side effects are renal uh, failure if there is a um, sudden uh, change in the uh, 
uh, serum sodium level it can lead to pontine or extra pontine uh, myelinosis it can also cause rebound intact annular hypertension and it can lead to hyperchloremic metabolic acidosis so once your child is uh, you have managed the child in the emergency room and started uh, the measures to control the raised icp and if child is hemodynamically stable then we go we can go for the diagnostic approach to the child uh, this this will be uh, then we have to ask the question where is the lesion whether it is progressive and we will try to find out the specific etiology and depending upon that specific treatment if possible so history, if you take a history, uh, if there is a history of gradual onset, slowly progressive, it may be SOL. SOL. It may, if it, they, there is a subacute history, it may be metabolic or inflammatory uh, cause. If there is sudden onset, it may be vascular event or it may be poisoning. If child has history of fever, it generally indicates the infectious cause and uh, uh, we can have to treat as per the uh, acute encephalitis uh, syndrome or meningitis. Um, some of the uh, sometimes the fever may be the only precipitating cause for the metabolic uh, metabolic underlying reason, such as diabetic ketoacidosis. Fever can also occur in autoimmune encephalitis. If you have some associated symptoms, uh, uh, such as viral prodrome, then it will point out point towards the viral encephalitis. If there is history of biphasic illness, it may be raised syndrome like patient who has come in encephalitis, slight improvement and then again deteriorated. It can be autoimmune encephalitis also. If there is a seasonal variation uh, or uh, there is endemic area for the uh, GE or the cerebellum area, malaria, we have to think in terms of those disorders. You, you you can get a history of uh, ingestion of toxic substance. Uh, at times, the direct history may not be available, but some circumstantial uh, history may be available, such as empty bottle found near the comato child. Uh, there may be history of bite or stings. Uh, there may be a, this, some of the patient may be having past illnesses like diabetes mellitus, epilepsy, or previous uh, such illness, uh, uh, such in, uh, incidences where they have uh, they had a altered sensorium, like a, a, a renal disease. If there is a history of trauma, if any infant with unexplained or febrile coma, uh, we have to consider a possibility of not non-accidental head injury and child abuse. In physical examination, if a fever is present, it points towards the meningitis, meningoencephalitis, which is the commonest cause uh, in our country. Uh, some some poisons and posticability st status states also have mild fever, but this can be dis differentiated by the history. If you have skin rash, it can point toward the meaning coxemia, dengue, measles, arboviral, or rickettsial diseases. If there are PTK, it can point toward the meaning coxemia, dengue, or hemo uh, hemorrhagic fevers. If there is a uh, hypertension. Um, this may be the hypertensive encephalopathy at the, or it may be the uh, pushing triad and it may be sign of a raised ICV. But Eurasian triad is usually very late sign. If you can uh, smell a peculiar order, it can point out towards the specific etiology in the poisoning or in case of some IEM like MSUD. If we have jaundice or hepatomegaly, the primary cause of coma may be uh, hepatic, uh, hepatic, but jaundice and hepatomegaly can also occur in malaria, rickettsial disease, dengue, enteric fever, or leptospirosis. Splenomegaly in anemia child with high grade fever can point towards the cerebellum area, particularly in the endemic area. Uh, mild hepatomegaly is also common in the RAID syndrome. If you have, uh, if you find a cardiac arrhythmia or congestive cardiac failure, it may suggest a um, hypoxic ischemic pause or cardiac pause for the coma. You can have a signs of trauma, bruising, bleeding, which is uh, which can point towards the traumatic pause. 
sometimes there is no uh, if uh, the there is history of neurological impairment developmental delay or there is an explain uh, this case may be the iem after history and general examination we, we can do the focused clinical examination for the localization of coma um, if there is hemiparesis uh, posture is hemiparetic posture it can uh, point towards the uncle herniation decorticate uh, 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 posture can point toward the dying suffering region decelerate uh, posture can uh, uh, point toward the midbrain or pontine uh, lesion if Classic posture is there. It can be because of pointer or middle medulla uh, injury, middle oblongata injury. We will record the response to the pain for the GCS. Uh, flexion. If there is a flexion to supraocular pain, it, it it indicates that there is a diencephalian injury. Extension to the supraocular uh, ocular injury uh, pain shows it is a midbrain injury. Check for the reflexes. Uh, you can check. Uh, we, we can check for the dull side. Normally, uh, there is a uh, before checking a dull side, we should exclude the cervical cord in injury. And uh, in dull side, you have to turn the head from side to side and watch the movement of eyes. In normal four wind, there will be deviation of eyes away from the movement. If you turn to the uh, head to the right, then the movement of eyes should be in the left left side. If there is no movement, it may be a lower pointine or brainstem injury. If there is minimal deviation, it may be midbrain or upper pointine injury. Check for the pupil response to the bright light. If it is brisk, then it is brainstem is intact. If uh, pupils are unresponsive or dilated, it may be midbrain or pontine injury. Check for the meningeal signs, which can uh, uh, point towards the meningitis. In, if you, in fundus, if you get a papillary edema, uh, it can it, in acute uh, raised ICP. You may not get a papillary edema. If you get a papillary edema, it is a sign of raised ICP. If you on fundus examination, if you get a retinal hemorrhage, subhyoid hemorrhage, then this may be the case for the uh, shaken baby syndrome. What is called the network? Check the pupils in the coma. If it is small and reactive, it shows a diencephalic dysfunction. If pupils are pinpoint, pupils are there, then it may be the point time or it may be in the uh, case of uh, point zero. Mid position, uh, fixed pupils are seen in midbrain, uh, midbrain injury. Bilateral dilated and non active pupils are seen in diffuse damage to the brain. Uh, sometimes, if you have put a atrop in drop by the fundus examination, that can also lead to the fixed dilated pupil. Uh, unilateral dilated pupil can point towards the transtentorial herniation. So there is a respiratory pattern which can uh, point towards the specific lesion. Uh, chain stroke breathing, uh, which has a phases of hyperapnea alternating with the apnea, which is seen in diencephalon injury or cerebral hemisphere injury. There is central neurogenic. If the neurogenic hyperventilation is seen, then it may be the, the it is the lesion in the midbrain and upper pontine. Apnastic breathing is seen in the pontine region. Ataxic shallow breathing is seen in the lower pontine region. Gasping slow breathing is seen in the medullary region. So, what are the investigation uh, which are uh, done in the comato child? First, check the blood sugar because it is easily treatable and uh, if sugar is below uh, 60, we have to give a uh, 25 percent dextrose 2 ml per kg collect the sample for the cbc this uh, this investigation should be done in the each and every child cbc uh, blood culture should be collected before the first dose of antibiotic if there is a history of uh, fever liver function uh, lft should be done even if you are not suspecting liver failure uh, blood and ammonia level if you are suspecting race syndrome acute liver failure or im Blood lactate level can be uh, can be seen uh, increase it can be increased in the severe sepsis or septic shock or inborn errors of metabolism. Uh, if the glucose is very high and there is a acidosis in the ABG, then you have to check for the ketoacid, check for the electrolyte. 
सीरम सोडियम सीरम कैल्शियम एंड मैग्नेशियम लेवल चेक फॉर द यूरिया क्रियाटिनिन पेरिफिल्स इफ यू आर सस्पेक्टिंग सेरेब्रल मलेरिया पेरिफिल्स मेयर फॉर द मलेरिया और सो द सिस्टोसाइट्स कैन बी सीन इन ह्यूमोलाइटिक इरोमिक सिंड्रोम क्वाइलेशन प्रोफाइल शुड बी डन इफ वी आर सस्पेक्टिंग इफ यू आर हैविंग ब्लीडिंग टेंडेंसी वन मोर इन्वेस्टिगेशन मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट इज सी एस एफ एग्जामिनेशन ऑफ द लंबार पंचर इंट्राकेनल इन्फेक्शन इज द मोस्ट कॉमन कॉज ऑफ नॉन ट्रोमेटिक कोमा बट देर इज अ रिस्क ऑफ ब्रेन हर्मिएशन इफ वी डू द लंबार पंचर इन द अक्यूट फेज सो एब्सोलूट कॉन्ट्रा इंडिकेशन फॉर द लंबार पंचर आर शॉक और अनस्टेबल हिमोडाइनेमिक हाइपर टेंशन जी सी एस लेस देन एट और डिटोरेटिंग जी सी एस इफ देर आर फोकल न्यूरोलॉजिकल साइंस uh and clinical feature suggest your raised icp so lp may be performed when child becomes hemodynamically stable and there is no evidence of raised icp and the csf can be uh, even if we have used we can send it for the pcr testing and we can get a, a, a pcr testing for the viruses bacteria if you are suspecting tb uh, tb pcr can be done and C, uh, csf should be sent for the culture always collect one extra sample for the uh, extra csf sample uh, in case you need a workup for the autoimmune encephalitis neuroimaging usually uh, ct is the first choice because uh, it it is uh, it can be done very quickly uh, most uh, it is more uh, helpful to rule out the acute hemorrhage or the skull fracture rather than actually uh, pointing towards the other etiology otherwise if you have infant uh, neurosonogram can be done if the open ef is present and ultra bedside ultrasonography can also be used for the to see the optic nerve sheet diameter if it is more than 6 mm then it is uh, it points toward the uh, papillary edema another uh, investigation which you uh, which is essential in most of the comatous patient uh, is eeg Uh, EEG pattern can provide a clue to the cause. If we don't uh, find the cause on the, uh, if we don't have a direct cause from the history, and it may be epileptic encephalopathy. The higher high percentage of children with coma have clinical and electrographical seizures, which can increase the ICP. And we also we need to treat these seizures. Continuous EEG monitoring is mandatory for the super refractive seizures like fire. some of the eeg patterns are uh, with, uh, will help for the uh, uh, proper uh, diagnosis uh, may be help in the diagnosis so as high voltage focal slow waves can be seen in the supra tent uh, temporal lesion plates periodic lateralized epileptic forms see discharges can be seen in herpes encephalitis paroxysmal epileptic discharges can be seen in status epilepticus or uh, non convulsive status epilepticus slowing of alpha rhythm is uh, seen in metabolic coma progressing progressing to the diffuse or triphasic paroxysmal waves uh, can be seen in hepatic and other metabolic coma the general management of uh, uh, coma remains same for almost all uh, whatever the etiology the monitoring once the child is managed in the uh, emergency room are stabilized We will uh, we will shift the patient to the pediatric ICU where we have to put the child into the continuous monitoring. Uh, here we have to monitor the vitals, GCS, neurological status, brainstem signs, uh, ICP, uh, ETCO2 if facility for ETCO2 is available, SpO2. The target cerebral perfusion patient, which is equal to um, uh, mean arterial pressure, uh, mean mean blood pressure minus ICP. So you have to target the mean uh, CPP for infant between forty to fifty, uh, for children more than fifty, and adolescent age group more than sixty mmHg. Assess adequate analgesia and sedation if child is ventilated. Uh, maintain the patency of airway. Provide oxygenation. Target normoxemia. Uh, optimal fluid intake and output management should be done. Correct the acid waste and electrolyte imbalance. Treat the fever. Control the temperature. Given uh, nursing, nursing care is very important, and uh, we have to change the position regularly on regular basis. 
take the uh, oral cavity skin and eye hygiene should be maintained. Many uh, comatose patients will require urinary cath uh, catheterization. Uh, also ensure that deloading uh, deloading of the colon because uh, that can also increase your ICP. Early internal nutrition should be the goal in the PICU after stabilization of hemodynamics. Specific dep uh, management depends upon the cause of coma. Uh, if you are suspecting uh, infective cause, uh, antibiotics for the meningitis, acyclovir for the uh, acyclovir for the herpes encephalitis. Uh, doxycycline for the rickettsial fever, artesunate for the cerebral malaria, uh, use anticonvulsant uh, for the status epilepticus, antidotes if you have specific poisoning or the uh, anti-snake venom for the snake bite. If you have diabetic ketoacidosis, ketoacidosis insulin and the fluids uh, we have to give. If there is autoimmune encephalitis, IV methylprednisolone, IV, IVG, IVIG, plasma phoresis are the uh, options. If there is acute stroke, especially basilar occlusion, then thrombolysis uh, can be done. And uh, for arterial dissection and venous thrombosis, uh, venous sinus thrombosis, anticoagulation should be started after consulting with the pediatric hematologist. The prognosis of coma mainly depends upon the etiology, duration, and depth of the coma. Uh, recovery is based in the uh, children who have primary epilepsy, where the if there is hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy, uh, we, we, then it has a worse prognosis. But the cardiac respiratory arrest occurring at any time in comatose child is a not good sign and it has a grave prognosis. Longer the duration and greater the depth of uh, coma, it is a poor outcome. So what are the common errors in uh, done in the management of coma? The administration of mannitol without ruling out shock or monitoring the hydration status. Uh, dextrose infusion in the absence of hypoglycemia. If child is older child is there, then you can use a normal saline as a maintenance period. Only if there is acute liver injury and the uh, infants are there, then we, we have to use a fluid with the dextrose. Many times, failing to recognize with the non-convulsive status epilepticus can uh, can be the problematic. Here, we need a, a bedside EEG. Um, sometimes, we shift the uh, patient for the imaging without stabilization. That is one of the common error. Administration of diazepam for posturing movements, which uh, which may be because posturing may be because of herniation syndrome. Here, we need to aggressively treat the herniation, vein herniation. The failure to ensure euglycemia or correct diselectrolytes is another common error. And failure to protect the airway and waiting to, to child collapse is another uh, common error which is done in the management of coma. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sachin, yes, for a most uh, extensive and elaborate topic given on the uh, approach to a comatose child. Very difficult to complete within 30 to 45 minutes, but you almost touch all the aspects which are required for a pediatrician to know, starting from the uh, presentation, giving the, the three, four case examples, where you have shown how one can be a reversible, other can lead to death. Most important thing, what we feel is that, again, you have to pick up the cause. If you get a cause, then it is very it becomes easy to treat. And more uh, early, you start the treatment with the treatment of the cause, then the prognosis will be good and excellent. So almost yes. you have touched the, also you have touched the most all aspects of the approach to a case, then the general examination finding, system examination finding, and also going to the coma etiology, investigation, and management part. Also are told about the prognosis and the what difficulties we can come or what problems we make when we are managing the case of coma. What I feel is that uh, everybody uh, come across the various causes of coma in day-to-day -day practice. In our setup, you know, we get more of a traumatic causes where road traffic accidents are nowadays are increased like anything. We get may, many cases of mild, moderate. So it's very important when a traumatic brain injury patient comes to classify into mild, whether it's a mild variant, moderate variant, so as per the protocol and guidelines. And depend on the triaging system should be done at an emergency level, prioritize the airway breathing circulation, manage, uh, provide the emergency management, and then you have to plan for the uh, uh, further assessment and treatment part. 
as far as prognosis is con concerned we should again uh, see that whether it's a treatable with whether we are dealing with a generalized infective condition we know that the, if there is a case like drug intoxication common poisoning metabolic if you diagnose early and if you have a specific antidote and if it is provided at appropriate time, again the prognosis is excellent in all these cases of coma mm -hmm. if the patient is having a neurometabolic disorder that has to be picked up otherwise again they will go into a permanent brain yes. injury so again the timing of management is very important what he has rightly mentioned in the mo most of the aspect any other questions if the uh, uh, delegates are having they can put forward sorry it becomes a very monotonous to give us such a long talk yeah, yeah. So there are two questions sachin put forward for you one question was in the first case which you described uh, what was the cause for the grunting and distress in the first case this was a neurogenic uh, uh, this is a central respiration actually so it the was more of a central involved. respiration yes brain stem yeah. was involved that was the reason and yeah. this so for us again in day, day to day practice what we feel is that uh, when most of the patients come in raised icd when they are in the coma phase and yes. always the dilemma as a pediatrician we face whether we should go with a mannitol or go with a, a three percent normal saline can you elaborate more फॉरबी but after that some some tolerance is developed to the mannitol and it may not be effective but that is not the case with the uh, 3% nacl also the 3% so you want to say that mannitol should be continued only up to for 3 days more after 3 days the effect maybe is some little gap bit more maybe given and then again we can use it if required but uh, 3% nacl can be given as a continuation but definitely 3% nacl also needs to be uh, we need to monitor the sodium level every 6 to 8 hours we cannot yeah, go we to monitor the sodium, sodium level above, above 160 okay because another question was put whether mannitol can be continued eight early for 5 days or more five doses or more so can we continue if there is signs of this they are persistent Uh, that is the question the um, most of the literature mentions that it is uh, after uh, 48 hours it uh, tolerance may develop and it may not help in it may not work so 3% nacl uh, has a better chance after 3 to 4 days and if any child yeah, leaves definitely having... especially if the patient yeah especially if there is a hypovolemia or there is yes. a renal injury you should be very cautious while using the mannitol that we yes, can sir. prefer for the 3% normal saline yes sir again just again for the as far as the prognostic factors are concerned again persistent coma deep coma gss less than 5 more than 48 hours persistent convulsions persistent hypoxia acidosis or hypoglycemia all these appear to be the bad prognostic markers yes. as far as the neuro disability is concerned so always when you are managing a case of coma in addition to the specific cause you have to take care of the supporting factors all this has to be managed properly others it, it may again even the patient survives he may survive with uh, some uh, neuro disability so uh, you have to ma manage the patient as a whole rather than we are considering on the uh, cause part yes sir any other questions from the no, audience no sir there are only two questions there are only two yeah. questions sir yes sir bhavish uh, uh actually just in a comment that uh, for all the clinicians So whenever we encounter a child having a unresponsiveness or a coma, we should and we must imagine that unless prone otherwise, it is because of the raised ICD because that is most important clinically relevant. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Definitely. Yes, sir. If you if you have then a known cause like in the 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 case discussed, which was a neuropathic uh, snake bite, snake that's bite. a different thing. When you have some known reason. but otherwise unless prone otherwise we see a child who is in coma you presume that the child is having a raised icp unless prone otherwise you may or may not get any changes on the ct you may or may not get changes on the fundus examination because these are a bit late sign so for a primary care pediatrician our job is to stabilize airway breathing circulation disability exposure is very rightly mentioned by dr kumar sir but as a clinician we should imagine 
that this child is having a raised icp and managed raised icp from the very first enter encounter keeping the baby's head in the midline 30 degree elevated if your iv line 2 at least one will be confused continuous infusion of a normal head all these practical tips are more important i think rest things have been discussed very well by dr suhas and dr ajangam sir Yes, sir. So, Sachin, there is another one question for you. Uh, are there any new options for a child with AKI and hypernatremia where we cannot use both mannitol and NSL? Any other option is available rather than yes. other than steroid? Uh, now, and if you if you are still having raised ICP after you have, and this mannitol and three percent NSL, then phenobarbital, coma, thiopental, coma. This this will be the second line, second line. Then third line will be the decra decompressive craniotomy, and this these are the options. Okay, but you have to treat that part okay? because it's yes, a life, this life same situation. Definitely, you have to find out some option. Yes. Hmm. Any other bad, bad? You can show, uh, throw some light on bad prognostic markers as far as coma is concerned. As you said, the duration of coma, if the coma is related to hypoxic and uh, ischemic uh, damage. The child uh, who is comatose after the cardiac uh, has revived after cardio respiratory yeah, arrest. Resuscitation time, how much resuscitation time is required in the periphery? That may also again the, decide yeah. the outcome of that patient. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yevle, sir, wants to add anything? Sir. Yes, sir, please. Some. I think, sir, is not there. I think he is. Yeah. Yeah, sir. Okay. Martin. Any more questions? You can wind up now. Then. Yes. Okay. Sir. Yes. Answer. Yes. Okay. First of all, uh, it was a very excellent session. It was a very, very excellent session and uh, discussed by Dr. Sachin, Sachin Jangam, sir. And uh, it was very well moderated by Dr. Dr. Kumbar, sir. I would like to thank Dr. Sachin Jangam, sir, for delivering excellent yeah, excellent session. And uh, Dr. Swas Kumbar, sir, for moderating the session. And uh, I would like to also thank, thank you, our... Uh, yes, sir. I would like to also thank our uh, our All Energy and President, Dr. Uh, Dr. Uh, Ram Gopal, sir, because he has taken an excellent initiative and uh, the uh, the thinking uh, wide vision he has i i pray him better i always pray him better things uh, i would like to also thank doc, our uh, mitochondria that is our energy uh, our secretary general dr amul pawar sir and uh, uh, i would like to also thank dr bhavish mithya sir which also is always there to help us and i would like to thank entire team of ob's and eb's of maharashtra iip for the constant support uh, and for all activities. I would like to thank our guest of honor, Dr. Vijay Ule, sir, for his presence, for his today's presence, and uh, for the, uh, for en encouraging us, the, uh, giving the knowledge. I would like to thank um, uh, Pallavi uh, Dharmadikari, madam, who is, a, uh, who is a in charge of Zoom meeting support. And I would also like to thank Dr. Vishal Raut, who is our, who is our pediatrician brother, who is the digital wizard of Maha AP. And lastly, I thank all delegates who, uh, who are who attend the session on the eve of Mahashivaratri. And I thank you all for, for, for this coming and attending the session. Thank you so much and, and good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you.